Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of the book Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. What I want to do in today's video is introduce you to oscilloscopes. Now an oscilloscope is an instrument that looks like this. This is one that's made by Siglent, uh, a Chinese company. This one's a, got a colour screen. Some of them are black and white rather than colour, but it's, it's pretty indicative of a modern good quality oscilloscope. So it's also a pretty fearsome looking instrument, isn't it? With lots of buttons and a big screen and you know you wonder what on earth it would do. And if you were to watch someone using an oscilloscope on a car, it's often equally bewildering. Uh, they, they put some probes in and then it draws these graphs and pictures and you wonder what on earth it's meant to be showing. Well, let's take a step back. The first thing to realise is that an oscilloscope, or I'll call it a scope, is actually in many ways very similar to just a humble multimeter. Oscilloscopes measure voltages. That's all they do. They measure voltages, but instead of displaying them in numbers, they display them as a graph. On the horizontal axis is time, and on the vertical axis is voltage. So it's a graph of voltage over time. That's all it is. So if we were to connect the oscilloscope, say, just to a 12 volt battery, the graph would just be a straight line because the battery voltage wouldn't be changing. Although I suppose we could say if we were to turn the headlights on and then connect the oscilloscope to the battery, that line might start going down slowly as the voltage decreased. But we wouldn't normally measure a, a car battery with an oscilloscope. Let's look at something that we might measure. A traditional narrow band oxygen sensor has an output voltage that varies from about 0.1 to about 0.9 volts. And if the car is running, that voltage will be going up and down fairly quickly as it switches from rich to lean, rich to lean, and as the engine management responds to that. If we use a multimeter, a digital multimeter, to measure the output of the oxygen sensor, the numbers are just randomly changing all the time. It's very, very hard to work out what's actually going on because the numbers are changing too quickly, perhaps four or five times a second, and that's too fast for the meter to keep up. But what happens if we connect a scope? Now, we can set the time base along the bottom. We can set uh, the, the scale of that axis, and we can set that scale so that we can see those changes in voltage occurring. We can see it going up and going down and going up and going down. So we can see how fast the sensor is changing in its output, how many times per second, because a, a sick sensor will be very slow in doing that. And we can also see the voltage range over which it's working. So monitoring the output of a narrow band oxygen sensor is an ideal uh, pursuit for a, a, a oscilloscope like this. What about some other sensors? Well, we can also look at some sensors that don't output just DC voltages, direct current, but output AC, alternating current voltages. And don't get hung up on those terms, but we're talking about a voltage which is behaving in a different way. It's going both positively and negatively with respect to zero. A good example of that is the uh, ABS wheel speed sensor, which is a voltage that goes like that. Now, you can see the way I'm showing it to you is the way you actually see it on a scope screen. So if you want to monitor the output of an AC sensor, like a wheel speed sensor, a scope is absolutely ideal for doing it. You can see how many ups and downs there are per second, and you can see the swing of the voltage, how high it goes and how low it goes, and you'll be able to compare that, say, with a specification sheet, a workshop manual, or so on. In that case, we were also being able to measure the frequency, how many times it went up and down. And we can do it by looking at the scale on the oscilloscope, or some scopes, like this one, will actually calculate that for you. We can also see the shape of the waveform. Is it a nice symmetrical, up and down like that, a sine wave? Is it a square wave, like that? Is it a triangular wave? Not many triangular waves in car systems, but there are in other sorts of electrical systems and electronic systems. So uh, a scope over a multimeter allows you to monitor quickly changing signals. It allows you to see the shape of those signals, as in, say, the AC waveform. It allows you to calculate frequency. It also allows you to calculate, in many cases, duty cycle. 
uh, it's, it's a window into signals that change fast. And that's really the best way of thinking about it. Do you need a scope? It depends. It depends what you're doing. Um, I would use my multimeter on a car perhaps 50 times as often as I would use my scope. But when I want to have a scope, when I need to be able to see the shape of those signals, then it's absolutely invaluable. Um, nothing else can replace it. So it really depends how critical it is to be able to find those particular signals, to be able to see the shape of those particular signals. These days, scopes have come down a lot in price. In fact, you can buy a simple digital scope for, for roughly the price of a medium or even lower level multimeter. So if you're not sure whether you need a scope in the sort of work that you're doing on a car, on its electrical or electronic systems, perhaps buy a cheap one to start with and just see how often you actually use it. I think you'll find, once you start using a scope on car systems, that you never want to be without it. It's just too valuable uh, in, in situations where you really have to see that signal, see the presence of the signal, see the shape of that signal, and so on. All covered in, in, in my book, a whole chapter on using uh, oscilloscopes. It's such an important area, uh, and so uh, if you want to know more detail about the sort of things I've been describing, have a look at that chapter. Thank you.